Change is coming. On Monday, May 2nd, 2022, it's been publicly announced that Square Enix has officially sold Crystal Dynamics, Idols Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal to Embracer Group for $300 million. This also includes the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Thief IPs, as well as 50 other IPs like Gex and Legacy of Kain. The deal is expected to be completed between July and September of 2022. This means that Square Enix has let go of all of their award-winning Western-owned studios. Crystal Dynamics launched in 1992 and was acquired by Eidos Interactive in 1998 and was part of Square Enix Europe since 2009. They are known for titles like Gex, Pandemonium, Legacy of Kain, and in 2004 were entrusted with developing further Tomb Raider titles, which they have since continued to develop after the original developer, Core Design, failed to gain critical and commercial success with later Tomb Raider entries. Crystal Dynamics would also later develop Marvel's The Avengers, which is a story in itself. Eidos Montreal was formed in 2007 and, of course, was part of Square Enix Europe. They're mostly known for rebooting the Deus Ex series with a series of prequel games and also rebooted Thief with a fourth game. In 2018, they developed the finale to Lara Croft's origin story, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and would release the underrated Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy in 2021. Square Enix Montreal launched in 2011 with an original focus to create new Hitman games, but this was changed in 2013 when Square Enix Europe wanted to produce mobile games. Full recognition would happen when they released three outstanding, award-winning entries in the Go series, which were Hitman Go, Lara Croft Go, and Deus Ex Go. They also released Hitman Sniper and a sequel titled Hitman Sniper The Shadows. A joint statement shared by all three developers was as followed. A new chapter in our story begins as we announce a plan to join the Embracer Group family. Embracer Group will help propel us to great new heights as we continue to deliver exciting experiences from our beloved portfolio of franchises as well as original concepts and IPs developed with partners. Thank you to our amazing fans for being part of our journey. The best is yet to come. Embracer Group. Who are they? What do they do? Embracer Group is a Swedish video game and media holding company that has been acquiring studios and several game assets for years, such as Gearbox Software and Dark Horse Comics, and from defunct publishers like THQ with Destroy All Humans and Nickelodeon titles like Spongebob. Previously, they were known more as Nordic Games or THQ Nordic later on, which should be more recognizable for people. Currently, they consist of 111 internal studios and publishers, with about 12,150 employees in 45 countries. And with this acquisition, these three studios will result in about 1,100 employees from eight locations around the world, now becoming Embracer Group employees. It's been no secret that Square Enix has had a number of failures, flops, and disappointments in the past number of years from its Western studios, but this doesn't mean the blame is all on these studios. It really isn't. The start of Square Enix's acquisition in 2009 was monumental, but as the years have progressed, it went sour such as the time the Hitman series and developer IO Interactive split from Square Enix, and they only found more success on their own. All the while, Square Enix continues to push their Japanese titles to the forefront like the never-ending Final Fantasy with endless sequels, remakes, and ports. Square Enix quickly abandoned the Deus Ex franchise with no true reason and cancelled up a follow-up to Mankind Divided. Some speculate low sales, others have said Square Enix got too involved in the development, and actually split was originally the full game in half, leaving Mankind divided on a, as of yet, cliffhanger. Marvel's The Avengers didn't really excite fans in its reveal, and the inclusion of live service elements, likely wanted by Square Enix, on top of glitches and endless patches, really took a hit to Crystal Dynamics' reputation, enough that Guardians of the Galaxy, a game released the following year by Eidos Montreal, had low sales and due to almost non-existent marketing, and most likely from the failure of Marvel's The Avengers. The Tomb Raider franchise also hasn't fared well. Despite being one of Square Enix's top-selling series, Tomb Raider 2013 didn't sell nearly enough on release for Square Enix's standards, only selling a mere 3.4 million when Square Enix expected 6 million. A deal for a one-year exclusivity deal on Xbox One for Rise of the Tomb Raider soured many, many players, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one of the most expensive games ever made that actually had decent marketing, sold poorly and was quick to go on sale for half the price in the following months. The entire Tomb Raider series has sold 88 million copies, with the reboot trilogy, also known as the Survivor Trilogy, selling 34 million copies within that 88 million, 
making up 43% of the series' lifetime sales. Square Enix cites the main reason for selling these three studios and their respected IPs is to adapt to the global business environment with the rise of blockchain technology, you know, like NFTs, as well as cloud gaming and artificial intelligence, and this transaction will assist the company to adopt to these already underway changes with a more efficient allocation of resources, essentially meaning that Square Enix doesn't want to spend money to fully push the potential of these studios. And remember this, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was made with a budget of about $135 million, and this deal, for three studios and all their iconic IPs like Tomb Raider, was made for $300 million. Recently, Gearbox Software, you know, the creators of Borderlands, was sold in April 2022 for $1.3 billion to Embracer. It's a huge slap in the face and shows the company going to a direction many aren't fans of. Most recently, a new Tomb Raider title has been announced to be in development with Unreal Engine 5, and before that, it was announced that Crystal Dynamics will be developing the reboot of Perfect Dark for Microsoft with the initiative, which now seeing in their statement on how it talks about developing IPs with partners makes perfect sense, and it's since been confirmed that this is still happening. This would also be the fourth owner of the Tomb Raider IP after Eidos Interactive, SCI, and Square Enix, and perhaps this will allow the franchise to expand with remasters, ports, and the return of the Lara Croft spin-off series. Embracer Group has also said that it would need to renegotiate licensing with Disney to deal with future titles in Marvel's The Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy series. So, here's to hoping Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal all get the creative freedom they deserve to make fan-favorite franchises, as well as new concepts, and really stick it to Square Enix for selling them. Just look at the success IO Interactive and Hitman has had after splitting. I think Tomb Raider is in good hands, and we can only look to the future to see how everything turns out. What are your thoughts on this shocking new deal? Let me know in the comments below, and for more Tomb Raider content, please like and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow House of Croft on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.